I'm glad you could come pray with me. We are continuing these sessions in an effort to learn more about prayer and deepen our individual prayer lives and take time to pray together. And I'm glad you have uh, taken time to come and do that with me today. Uh, we are also continuing to use the Indispensable Guide to Practically Everything Prayer um, as our guide for these sessions, uh, the book, of course, by Marsha Ford. And we're in a section called Profiles on Prayer, and um, where we've been looking at different individuals. And today we're looking at C.S. Lewis, um, an author uh, that many Christians are aware of. But even if people aren't aware... Um, through Christianity, they may be aware of his books, uh, The Chronicles of Narnia, which have also been made into movies, uh, which brought a, a new um, interest in C.S. Lewis as an author. And I'm going to uh, read to you the introduction that our author has on C.S. Lewis. In addition to being a noted Cambridge literary scholar, C.S. Lewis was among the best known converts to Christianity in the 20th century. By his own admission, he came to faith reluctantly and after a long and difficult struggle. The fruit of that struggle was a mind that grappled with spiritual reality and shared the resulting observations with readers far beyond the walls of academia. Whatever conclusions Lewis reached about prayer, he came about honestly. Lewis was never one to speak down to his audience, and when he wrote about prayer, his questions about the subject revealed his humanity and vulnerability. And so, uh, uh, born in Ireland, uh, he was um, raised in a Christian home, uh, but when his mother died of cancer after he had prayed very fervently for her to not die, uh, as a child, he was about like nine or 10 when she passed, uh, he turned his back on God and, and um, Christianity. And it was uh, 20 years later, uh, when his, after his father died, um, and Christianity just kept coming back to him. Uh, God kept beating on his heart and knocking on his door. And uh, as he told his brother, I just cannot not come back to the faith. He just, um, he, as she said, it, it was reluctantly. He tried to deny it. He tried to... Um, find, um, what am I trying to say, um, information that would prove that it was not worthy, uh, but everything in him and everything that he came across pointed to um, Christianity as being uh, right for him and as being uh, right for the world, um, that Christ did live and die and was raised again. Um He's written many books. Uh, the Screw Tape Letters uh, is one where he kind of uh, tried to address the topic of prayer. Um, and this, um, a senior devil teaches a junior devil how to trip up the Christians. He is bedeviling. Um, I've never actually read the Screw Tape Letters. I don't know if any of you have. Um, in fact, I have not read a C.S. Lewis book, um, which is kind of surprising, um, giving my... <laughs> as much as I read uh, for um, church and um, seminary, that we never had a C.S. Lewis book uh, that we were uh, called to read. He's written over 30 books. I don't know if I said that already. Um, and in such a variety of um, styles of books as well uh, is pretty interesting. Mere Christianity is probably uh, one of the most well-known. Uh, that one, I, I know many... Uh, quotes from and um, much of what he talked about in there, but I've not actually read the book. I have it in my office. Does that count? <laughs> I've seen the movies. I've seen the Narnia movies. Um, I don't know if that counts or not. Um, the author tells us Lewis's brilliance lay in part in the effort, effortless way he distilled difficult theological concepts into readily understood images. And uh, that is something that's really nice. I know that even though um, he um, lived in an earlier time and in some ways his verbiage is a, is a little different than what we might read, it's, he's still very uh, easy to read. In Mere Christianity, likely his most widely read book, she says, he presented the image of prayer that also described the Trinity. Imagine, he suggested, a Christian kneeling in prayer trying to get in touch with God. 
he's reaching out in prayer, but he's also aware that the inclination to pray came from within, from the Holy Spirit prompting him to pray. And he's aware that Christ is present, helping him pray and, and, and interceding on his behalf. Lewis wrote, the whole threefold life of the three personal being is actually going on at that ordinary in that ordinary little bedroom where an ordinary man is saying his prayers. The man is being caught up into the higher kinds of life. He is being pulled into God, being pulled into God by God while still remaining himself. The author says, a person prays to God through the prompting of the Holy Spirit with Jesus at his side. Lewis used one simple illustration to explain two complex subjects, prayer and the Trinity, and in such a simple way, in, something, in a way that each of us can uh, relate to, right? Many of us have had that experience of, of feeling uh, a need to pray and feeling drawn to prayer. Um, and, and that, of course, is the Holy Spirit, and we're reaching out to God, but we also feel that presence of Christ with us. Um, so I thought that was a beautiful way to uh, describe not only prayer, but the Trinity, uh, as she said. Lewis recognized prayer for the sacrifice of time and self that it is. To Lewis, prayer sometimes seemed like work, and you might feel that same way. <laughs> And sometimes you're like, okay, I have to do this. I need to do this. This is, this is something I, I, I'm, I'm required to do almost. His honesty in admitting that helped people to realize that they were not alone in their struggles with prayer. And, and it is amazing to me, um, even for myself, uh, when I think back over my faith journey and the struggle to pray, uh, the struggles um, to create space, for prayer, the struggle to feel worthy to pray or that my prayers are worthy. Um, and I know I'm not alone in this. Um, I've talked to many folks who struggle with prayer and feeling like they're doing it right or doing it uh, well enough um, or that they're even, that it's really okay for them to come before God. Um, we talked a little bit about this in um, our Lenten study last Sunday, that God really doesn't care what we say. We could come and scream and yell at God. Um, what God wants is, us for, is for us to come, to be in relationship, to care enough to want to communicate, which is all prayer is, right? It's that, that conversation with God. It's communicating with God and allowing God to communicate with us. It's not just a one-way communication. It's not sending a letter and not expecting any uh, answer in return. It's also being open to listening uh, and receiving what God has for us as well. The author says he also felt the constant tug of distractions and found that at times he could remain focused only by praying the written prayers of the Anglican book of common prayer, and we, we looked at that book um, a few sessions ago. Um, and so if you're someone who struggles with distractions, oh wait, that's all of us <laughs> in times of prayer, especially when we're trying to sit quietly and just listen for God's uh, still small voice. Um, even C.S. Lewis had trouble with this, so that might be an encouragement. I know I have trouble with this. It's just part of having a human brain, I've determined. Um, maybe if I were a monk and could spend enough time or did spend enough time in uh, silence and prayer, I would get a better handle on controlling uh, the distractions. But I too find them uh, creeping into prayer time every time I sit for prayer. It's like, oh, wait a minute. I think I've gotten off track. Sorry. <laughs> and you may have experienced similar issues. Um, C.S. Lewis wrote, simply to say prayers is not to pray. Otherwise, a team of pop popularly trained parrots would serve as well. <laughs> I love that. So yes, just reading or reciting those prayers from the Book of Common Prayer, just speaking them is not enough. You need your heart engaged as well. You need to have a desire to actually have communication going, two-way communication going. It's very important. 
And so I see uh, Nancy has read some of uh, the Narnia books anyway. Um, and, um, and like I said, I have several other books in my office. Um, and um, perhaps I will read one of them. I've read some more uh, information from him. I loved this. I found this, and I'm going to have to read it off my computer because I couldn't print it. Um, but C.S. Lewis said that when he first became a Christian, he had trouble with church gatherings. Hmm. This is to go out to all those folks who are having trouble coming back to church. <laughs> so later you might share this on your uh, Facebook so someone else might, might catch this. Um, I, it, it says, um, he wrote, I thought that I could do it on my own by retiring to my rooms and reading theology. And, it wouldn't, and I wouldn't go to churches anymore. Hmm. But he found the sermons often dull, and he disliked organ music, uh, which he described as one long roar. <laughs> I hope Sean doesn't hear this. Uh, he had contempt for church hymns, which he, in quotes, considered to be fifth-rate poems set to sixth-rate music. Ooh, <laughs> he was quite the intellectual, remember. Um, as his faith matured, however... He grew to value gathering with other Christians to worship. And then I love this part. As his ego diminished, he realized that the hymns were being sung with enthusiasm by elderly saints in neighboring pews. And then he realized that he was unworthy to clean their boots. He said, going to church gets you out of your solitary conceit. And of course, we all know that uh, a big problem for humanity, for each of us as human beings, is our conceit, our ego, and our pride. <clears throat> the author offers uh, final thoughts. Some Christians find it difficult to admit to the struggles they have with prayer. They may be afraid to appear less spiritual than other Christians, or they may be concerned that their questions could cause new Christians to doubt God. But being open and honest about any faith challenge can often help others feel as they are not alone in their struggles and open the door for you to minister to them. And that, again, goes back to um, our pride and our conceit, right? We don't want to look like we don't know what we're doing. We don't want to look um, stupid, like we're not a good enough Christian, you know, to say that we struggle with prayer, um, we might think makes us look less than. But it is important to be honest because I have yet to meet anyone who had no struggles in their prayer life. Um, I haven't met everyone in the world, but uh, nearly everyone I have talked to has spoken of having some struggle. It's, it's hard, whether it's keeping a focused, uh, keeping those distractions at bay, um, making space um, for prayer as a discipline, we all seem to have our struggles and they vary from time to time and being honest about those not only is good for ourselves <laughs> that can bear witness uh, for others uh, to be encouraged in their prayer life as well so we will now take some time to pray uh, i will begin it with three tones end with three tones and we'll have the music in the background and i would encourage you uh, during this time to try and surrender your ego to our god and to humble yourselves uh, with Jesus by your side as prompted by the Holy Spirit. Let us be a people of prayer.
surrender is a difficult thing. We have been taught to hang on to our pride and our ego and that it serves us well um, by our world and our society, but we know that quite often um, it can serve us well, but it can also be a real detriment to how we interact with others and how we receive the love and grace of our God. Thank you so much for joining me this morning, and I pray that uh, your prayer time, not only today, but throughout the week, will be a time of blessing for you. Uh, I would ask you uh, to like the session and share it, and you might even include a comment as to why you want to share this uh, session, um, that others might be encouraged in their prayer lives as well. Let us now close together in prayer. Will you bow with me? O most holy God, we give you thanks for the gift of prayer. We give you thanks that you want us to come to you, that you are always there to hear us. They have a desire for us to be in relationship with you. Thank you, Brother Jesus, for your interceding on our behalf. As we pray, you are there translating our desires from earth to heaven. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for the prompting of prayer, for the words that you give us when all we have are deep groans. Thank you, O Holy Being, for all that you are and all that you continue to be in our prayer lives and in our daily lives. To the power of Christ that we pray. Amen. Thanks again for being here. I'll look forward to seeing you again next week.